Hi, welcome to my studio. So, let's see, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of videos, we're taping vlogs and videos and making projects and stuff, and I am at a crossroads. Here I am coming out to my studio and I'm wondering what to make. You know, I've been doing a lot of smaller things lately, which are a lot of fun, quick, easy, and you know, that instant gratification of something, start, finish, great. But I'm kind of at the point where I feel like I want to dig into something deeper and I need to find the inspiration to do that. I need to find the creativity, the level of creativity where I can make something more elaborate. So I'm out here in my studio with, uh, you know, I've got to do a little tidying, you know, when I'm out, not here all the time, things start to accumulate on the table that don't belong in the studio. I'm sure you know how that is. A hammer ends up on your glass table, a, you know, glue gun or something ends up on your glass table, not the stuff that's supposed to be there. So I've done a little bit of tidying, got that taken care of. Now I'm going to try to figure out what I, what it is I want to make. So I'm thinking maybe something kind of small, which I just said I want to avoid, but uh, I kind of have this idea for something for my garden, and I think I might want to carry that through first, and maybe that'll inspire something bigger, something more elaborate. So not too long ago, I was given these little uh, fusible hangers. I've got three different sizes here, and a lot of times when I get something new, you know, the manufacturer sent these to me, it was very kind of them, so thank you, Handy Hanger. And I get something new and I'm not quite sure what to do with it. It has to sit on my table for a little while. I live with it and until something comes and inspires me. So I love gardening, you know this. And so I was thinking about maybe making little, almost like a string of beads for my garden, to hang from my garden fence. Or maybe take a piece of wood. I'll go out in the woods and find a little piece of wood and hang a bunch of them from it. Not like, like a sun catcher, not necessarily a wind chime, because I don't want them to kind of clink, but something that would just catch the light as the wind blows would just turn and rotate, and I see that beautiful light come Okay, you're reading my mind. I'm thinking dichroic, but just to be fair, I'm gonna add some other colors too. So come with me, let's go get some materials to make these cute little pieces. Now, I don't have a lot in mind as far as shape or anything. I kind of want them a little irregular and maybe overlapping. I liked, a lot of my things I like to be really meticulous about. I'm trying to get myself to be a little more free or a little more um, abstract in my work. It's not easy to do when you're someone who's been, you know, so um, precise oriented. So here we go. I'm getting my big tubs of dichroic out. You know how I love these. I'm sorry, but I just do. Um, so we're going to bring these over here because this is heavy and I don't want to drop it. So as I mentioned, I've got all these different things in my studio now that are making it a little cluttery. I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, lay out my tubs of dichroic. Fun. All right, look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that beautiful stuff. And over here, more beautiful, more beautiful, more beautiful. All right, come with me over here. Uh, let's see, what am I going to use? Um, hmm, I got this. Well, let's see, I'll grab, let's go this way again, we'll grab a tub on the way. So I like, I, so when I teach a class, we eat out at um, some restaurants and we get these nice plastic containers that the food comes in. And I say it's a container because they're great um, to store things in. Here's my whole stash here. And I like the dark ones because sometimes the, the crook shows really well. I've got these containers, they're nice and sturdy, and I use them to transport the glass around the studio. So you can see I have a whole bunch of them up here. Um, and it's recycling. And it's recycling, yeah, and I've been using these for years, they work great. And, uh, you yeah, know, so I might suggest you do that too. Although it also shows how much we eat out, which maybe is not so great. <laughs> All right, so I think I would like some color in addition to dichroic on these, and, you know, I love blues. I've got some blues in there, I think. Um, red would be really attractive. Uh, some green, yeah. Oh, that's kind of an aqua. Let's hold that over here. Yeah, that's an aqua, but I love it. So Pretty. we're taking that. And Nikki's here helping us again today. Hey, Nikki. Hello. Thanks for helping us out. And some purple. I'm going to lay these over here so you can see the, the pretty colors. Oh, and of course, if we're doing something sunshiny, we need some yellow. Maybe this. Okay, so look at all these great colors I have, but I think I want more yellow. 
and maybe something a little bit paler red. I don't know, red doesn't really come in a paler color, but uh, let's try some more yellow. Maybe some opaque. Ooh, look at that. There we go. Well, that's an amber. That's okay. Amber's fine. Maybe a little orange or something. You know, a lot of times when I construct this way, I'll think to myself, you know, that's not one of my favorite colors right now. Not one of the colors I would pick. And then you use it and you find out, oh my gosh, today or for this particular project, that color just made it. So allow yourself that flexibility too, to pick things on a whim. All right, here's another blue. Oh, that's a, such a pretty blue. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop. I think. Oh, look at this, this one right here. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I love that. All right, I'm going to stop here, put these in my bucket. I don't think I want that yellow. Although, you know what, I'm gonna try one in the yellow because maybe I'm gonna find out that opaque is fabulous. So that's how you learn. You know, is by experimenting. You know, taking what you know and using it and then taking that and risking a little bit and trying something different. So let's go back over here where we've got my glass cutter and things. So I'm thinking these should be a little bit dainty, like probably not any bigger than that, like one by two or something on that those lines. So I guess I'll cut a couple pieces and then see what size of these little fusible inserts work best. Oops. All right, so over here I've got my glass cutter and my pliers. Now this, look at this piece. That one's like ready to go. Do you think it's too big? I don't know. Let's say, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. I'm feeling like it should be a little smaller. Are you gonna do squares? I think I am gonna do squares. Maybe some diamonds. So I kind of like that shape right there. You know what I didn't bring was some some clear to go on these. I take this one, this one. How about if we leave it that shape? And then how about we leave that one that shape? Oh boy, and this one, we'll leave that shape. Oh, this is getting so easy. This one, let's see, I'm gonna cut in thirds. Okay, so I need some clear to combine with these because I don't think I want to combine dichroic on dichroic because I'm not really sure what's going to happen. So maybe we do want to try that. Experiment. Yeah, let's, let's experiment. So I need a toothpick or something. I'm going to use this pencil to determine which is the dichroic side. Okay, that's the coated side. So if we put that down and we take this one and we put the coated side up and we do something crazy, like match them together like that, Ooh, look how cool that could be. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So if we take that, and we take these small little hangers, the mini Ellie's. How do the hangers work? Don't know how the hangers work. We're about to find out. I think it says here, it's designed to fuse directly into your smaller fused glass projects. Determine where you need the hanger to be placed for the best hanging balance for the piece. Place hanger with a loop just above, oops, gotta turn around. Just above the edge of the glass, you may wish to slightly to lightly tack hanger in place to avoid shifting. And then we place another piece of glass on top, sandwiching it between the two pieces. That sounds easy enough. I'm going to pour these on the table. Look how adorable these are. You see that? Oh, here, I'll put it on top of some glass. So if we take that, and let's see, let's make sure we got the coating up on this one. Nope, we want the coating up. There we go. Up on that one. We want it. Oh, this is actually the one we're working on here, over here. So I guess we take these little hangers. And we put them between the layers. But now, I suppose these need to be similar in size. So we, the hanger, we have a hanger sticking out the top and a hanger sticking out the bottom. Something like that is what we're supposed to be doing. 
There we go. So we've got enough space right here for some a uh, little piece of probably fishing line to go through to thread those together. This is going to be pretty fun, right? All right, so I kind of like that size. I kind of like the randomness of that. Let's take this one and maybe combine it with this one and see how that works. Okay, so we'll take that, we put a little hanger here, a little hanger here. Oops, let's see. I can see that it might be a good idea to assemble these right inside the kiln. <laughs> they want to move around quite a bit. I bet you a little tiny bit of glue would be helpful as well. So these are really going together pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm especially interested in these abstract shapes. How are they going to hang? Are they going to hang nicely? Are they going to, uh, you know, spin in the wind or whatever? So I'm pretty excited about that. Look at this piece. This one has a, an interesting texture to it. And then there's this purple piece. I think that's beautiful. I think I'd like to put those two together like that. Um, so let me go ahead and put those together. A little hanger right here. These things are fun. So these are um, wire that will withstand the heat and still hold up because that's the problem with some other wires is that you can put them between your glass, you can put them in the kiln, but after they're fired, they can't withstand the heat. And so they break down and they don't, they're not secure anymore. Look how fun that piece is. So uh, also it says in the instructions, you can fire these multiple times and they're still strong. That's another big plus because if you use copper wire, you might be able to get away with it one time, but if you bend the wire at all during the course of putting this project together, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and eventually breaks. Then you kind of lose the project. Then you have to do something different with it. Oops, that's okay too. All right, let's see, how about that piece right there? Ooh, you know what we have not done yet? Well, first of all, I'm sorry, I gotta use that one because that looks outdoory and just beautiful. So I'm gonna use that one and I'm gonna combine it with, oh, let's see. I'm gonna combine it with that. And I'm gonna do something kind of similar in shape. So I'll just kind of cut this. Like that. I'm running out of room. Oh, never running out of room. Just running out of table. Okay, place that there. This one here. And now, you know, I've brought these spectacular colors over. We have to work some of these colors in. So here I've got some yellow. And maybe mix it with that. No, maybe not. Maybe mix it with a blue to get something interesting. Or maybe just do two yellows, or a yellow and a clear. Oh, uh, let's see, what about that? I don't think that's interesting enough, to be honest with you. I'm gonna have to add some dichroic to that. <laughs> I just love my dichroic, what can I say? All right, all right, I'll break that off. Oh, I put the yellow in there, that doesn't go in there. It's over here. All right, so now we got a yellow and a dichroic, look at how that makes a, I'm going too quickly there, I'm sorry. But that makes a beautiful mirror-y little appearance. Okay, we'll put that together. So, I'm going to, rather than be redundant, I'm gonna put some of these together off camera, and then we'll turn the camera back on, I'll show you what we've made, and you can watch me load them in the kiln. I made a bunch more. Nikki realized that I was having a lot of fun, and so she came over and helped me make some too. We decided we didn't have enough glass. We decided to open all three, there's three different sizes of hang, candy hangers. We decided opening just one package wasn't enough. So we had to open all three packages and we're just mix and matching the pieces because they're rated for different weights, but none of this is heavier than five pounds, which is what these are rated for. So we are just combining whatever works and having a heck of a good time doing it. So like this one right here, Nikki's got some crazy shapes going together, but some you know, kind of blue greens on one side and this beautiful teal on the other. And then we decided we needed more texture. So I took out this nice big four inch sample piece because I think that'd be beautiful on some of these. And we pulled out some more uh, colored glass and you can see like here, she's got, this is one of Nikki's pieces and she has a big hanger here and a little hanger here. We're gonna see how that works.
I mean, it doesn't really have to support more than its own weight, so I think we're going to be fine. So we're just kind of having a good time putting stuff together. So I decided, you know, we're working on some of these smaller pieces, and I thought, we need more glass. So come with me. I pulled out the fun stuff. So these, this is my stash of my little two by four inch pieces. And I'm primarily looking for patterns on clear uh, because I think I have enough over there in those scrap pieces of the dichroic on black to be useful. So these piece, these three right here are dichroic on clear. And I thought those could be fun. And then I have this fun bag of material. And um, I kind of liked this one. Oh, I'm going to try to put over something dark. I don't have anything dark. Uh, so you can see the pattern. It's little tiny dots. And let's see, I have this textured piece here. Isn't that fun? And I have little hearts. I don't always use the hearts, you know, because I think to some, on some things I think hearts can be a little corny, and on other things they can be really darling and, and just perfect. So, but I think I'd like to try some on this. So, and I also have this uh, fun wavy texture. Now what will happen is if we do a full fuse, the wavy texture will, will fire out and it won't be texture anymore, but we'll still see it. We'll still get a sense that that texture was there. So I think this, uh, along with these other patterns and textures and stuff that we already have going over there, is going to make a really cool combination. So let's take this over there and continue building. And this time, uh, I want to fill up a kiln shelf, of course, because that's, and we're going to use up every one of those darn little hangers. When we run out of hangers, that's when we're going to have to stop. So let's go back over to the assembly table. Carry my little dicker away. <laughs> All right, let me go this way so Nikki doesn't have to go backwards because my studio can be a bit tricky to navigate, particularly backwards. So, oh my gosh. Let's go ahead and make something with the little hearts. And you know, Nikki's getting kind of big here. And I'm kind of a fan of that. Let's go bigger. You know, it's, what is it? Go big or go home? Look how pretty that is. Although, is this one on purple? Um, I think the back side, it's a dichroic on black. Ooh, okay, never mind then. Well, do I want to use these hearts on this purple or on this blue? I think they show up prettier on the blue. They show up a little more vibrant, you No, know, right? I love blue. We love blue. Okay, I'm going to put it on this color. I'm going to cut that. Look at this. You know, uh, if you guys do this in your studio, you have all of this space, but you work yourself into an itty-bitty, teeny-tiny corner. Yes, I do it all the time. There, look how fun that is. Now that one, I'm going to use, they have these bigger hangers right here. And look how nicely that's going to work here, right in there. And then we just found out that if you have a big one down here, I don't think we want any of the metal exposed on the sides. So we found out that you can take some wire nippers and you can shorten these just a little bit if you have to. If you need um, something a little narrower, let me tuck that right in there. All right, and I'm gonna have to cut this piece of glass just a little bit to make sure I get quick contact with that hanger. But see, I cut that so it fits nicely now. So these things are quite a little bit. Quite, okay. Now you can make your own little hangers if you buy a specific kind of wire, but these things are so darn fun to work with, and you get right down to the glass work. You know, you don't have to spend time playing with wire. So I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of these, right off the bat. Oh, look, I'm going to put these two together. Look, these two little shapes just happen to work together. This is a, a dichroic on black. Here's little hearts on the back side. Isn't that going to be fun? So what I'm looking forward to doing is we've recently redecorated our back porch and it, we have some new features back there we didn't have before. And I'm trying to keep it simple, but clutter-free, and uh, I want to put something out there with some color that moves. And I'm thinking these little guys hung maybe from a little stick. 
and have them hang so in the corner where they would just kind of move, not necessarily clink together, but just the sunlight would go through them as the wind blows. So I'm looking forward to seeing if that idea pans out and is really works and looks great. Okay, Nikki has a radical idea. She says, why don't I just take this out of the package, put two together, and call it done. Can you imagine that hanging? How cool that would be? So do you think I should put it on a color? Or should I put it on another piece of dichroic? Oh, let's see what another piece of dichroic looks like. That is flat out decadent. All right, now, so you take these out of the package. I recommend using a razor blade to open them, not the way I'm doing it, because you don't want to break your glass. Um, but I don't know where I have a razor blade right now, so that's what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to figure out which is the coated side. That's the coated side, so we don't want them touching. What happens if we do that? That's crazily awesome, right? That's crazily awesome. So we have these cool spirals, this kind of animal print. We put them, ooh, suppose we put them together like that so that they're independent, but they shimmer together. Is it too big? <laughs> no. Shimmer together. I don't know. All right, so you see they have these labels on them. The labels are kind of difficult to get off. So what I generally do is take these pieces, stick them in a bucket of water, let them soak for a minute or two, then the labels come right off without leaving any residue. So I'm gonna take these over to the bucket. I'm gonna take this one too, because this one's going down. This one's going down today. I don't know where it's going to happen, but it's going to get used. Take the packaging off of that. Okay, come on out of there. Take it over here to my bucket. Because you don't want to use a razor blade to take this off or any abrasive because you'll scratch your dichroic coating. And that's, uh, you know, you don't want to do that because you want to keep that coating intact because that's the whole reason we like that glass is for the coating. It's beautiful. All right, so let's let those soak for a minute. So I'm a fan of using towels in my studio instead of paper towels because it dries nicely. I'm not going through rolls and rolls of paper towels. And I buy these uh, white bar towels are inexpensive. I buy them like 50 at a time. And I don't mind throwing them in with the wash because there's, you know, they're clean. So you might want to consider getting some towels, you know, washcloth towels. You buy them at, you know, inexpensive store and just use them in your studio. So we're gonna go for some bigger ones there. We have two big ones here. I wanted to go another big one while we're waiting for those to soak. So I'm gonna cut this pretty texture. I'm gonna cut the end off. So what I'm thinking as I'm planning this project is that I want a series of maybe larger pieces that then teardrop down into smaller pieces. So if I have two, two big ones, I probably want a third. And if I have medium ones, I probably want multiples of each of those. I want to have a series of sizes that are similar. So if I have large ones, I want several large ones. If I have medium, several medium. Small ones, several small. I'm not sure how I'm going to put this together yet. In my mind, I have a certain vision for it, but I like to um, allow myself the flexibility to make changes as I go along, because I've never done this before. This is all brand new, and I'm just having a good time. What I know, what I absolutely do know, though, is I'm going to learn something from this that I'm going to take and use further. I'm going to take that information, what I've learned here putting these together, and I'm going to take it and use it on something that turns out to be more elaborate and more of a sculptural or um, functional piece of art. Something bigger and, and not better, but different. So that's what I love about this kind of experimentation is, you know, every, everything has value. So let's find a complement for this piece. We've got some blue, blue, orange, yellow. Um, you know, did I, do I have some real yellow here? Ooh, that's, I'm not loving that. Um, here we go, here's a nice lemon. Yeah, I think I would like that. Because I'm thinking, there's a spot on my back porch where we sit and we watch the sunset. I call those my sunset seats. And so I like the idea of, of the pretty, you know, sunset colors. I'm going to cut this with orange to kind of work with this dichroic. Cut the dichroic to kind of work with the orange. There we go. Put those two together. And I, I like that. All right, it's got a nice shimmer to it. 
got a nice shape to it, kind of unique. And now this, I'm going to use this hanger right here. The top one's terrific. The bottom one, I think I have to trim a little bit. So let's put that down there. Yep, I need to trim that a little bit. So I'll take my wire cutters and trim. And now it's a little bit different shape, but I think it still works fine. It doesn't take too long for that to soak off. So um, it's a great way to get those labels off. Look, look, can you see how easily that's coming off? Piece of cake. Whereas before, you had all this residue, and now I've got a nice clean piece of glass. You just have to remember they're in there, because I have had students say, oh my gosh, I lost a piece of glass, I have no idea where it is. And then I say, did you look in the bucket? Oh yeah, there it is, found it. Okay, there's still a little bit of residue on there, you can feel my thumb. But the um, towel, the coarseness of the texture of the towel should take that off. There's one more. Here we go. Look how nicely that comes off. Now, if you're working with Sharpie marker, then you can soak it, or you can also, um, as long as it's not dichroic, you can use like a, a little sponge like this with the scruffy side side to take that marker off. But I want to avoid using anything abrasive on the dichroic because I don't want to damage the coating. All right, so let's go back over here with these. Oh, look at those two together. Oh my gosh. Ooh, look at that, so fun. Oh, and like that, we do it like that. Wow, that's bigger than I had anticipated, but I think we might have to just do one just to see. Or what happens if we cut these at an angle and put them together? Ooh, I don't know. What happens? We're running out of handy hangers, which is probably a good thing, because otherwise I'd be here all day. And I don't really have a problem with that, actually. <laughs> all right let's put this let's get this together because we want to put these in the kiln so you guys can see what these are gonna look like i want to see what these are gonna look like i'm not gonna be sleeping tonight you'll be wondering what ha what's going on out there in my kilns all right let's see we want the coating facing out on both of these now i know that's a wear item but i'm cool with that on this project all right so i'm gonna put this here i'll bring it closer so you can get a better view on this all right so let's do that. Oh gosh, I don't know about that. It's so ridiculous. And that. Where do we want to do that? What do you think, Nikki? I don't know. How big do you want it? Well, this looks a little wide to me. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do that. I don't know if they're going to hang perfectly straight, but I guess that's part of the excitement. I'm going to do it like that. And then I think I would like a complement for this one. I'm going to do the same thing. But remember, I said if I have two, I probably want three. So I probably want three. So I'm probably going to have to go get, dig another one. All right, one. so I pulled out a kiln shelf. We're going to go ahead and load these on the shelf. I have a feeling these are going to slide around when I do this. So, uh, but... Whatever, we may have to put a few back together once we get over to the kiln. That's pretty, pretty common. So I've got these two fun pieces. I've got this one called, ooh, what was it called? I don't remember. This one's pebbles and this one was, do you remember? Thorn. Thorn, okay, we're gonna put pebble and thorn together. And I wanna double check that the coating is out because I don't want the coating touching itself. And I know that's a little bit of a wear item because it's gonna be outside, but uh, in this situation, I'm kind of excited about getting a little more, a different kind of sheen out of it. So I'm cool with that. And I happen to have just enough of these big hangers to do this piece right here. And then this one, we're going to have both a, a dichroic on black and then a dichroic on clear together. And look at that. Oh my gosh. Isn't that just fun, right? Okay, and I have just enough. I'm going to put this with the, let's see, this one, I'm going to put the coating, I'm going to put the coating on this one facing the black to protect it because, oh, wait, that's not right, like that, because that'll protect it on the kiln shelf. I want to make sure that I don't lose that coating on the shelf. So there we go. So that's what that's going to look like. Fun. So that said, maybe I want to do the same with these, but... Hey, 
let's give it a try and see what happens. So I've got another hanger for this one. And as it turns out, I have a few more pieces than I have hangers. So we'll just make whatever we can. There we go. I'm kind of wondering if this kiln shelf is going to be big enough, but let's just go for it, shall we? All right, take this over here, place it like that. I'm going to have to readjust these when we get to the kiln for sure. When you place things on your kiln shelf, you want them about half inch apart so that they, uh, you know, don't melt together. Oh boy, oh boy. We made it. Just barely made it, actually. All right. That one looks like it would go nicely there. Yeah. Good thing I didn't have more than one cup of coffee today. All right, let's try this one over here. This one looks like it would nest nicely there because of the shape. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. We'll adjust that one when we get to the kiln. Well, there's an advantage to the bigger hangers, and that is that they stay put a little bit better. You have to make maybe a bigger project, but they're, they don't tend to fall off like this little one does because you got more glass there, or more, uh, more metal. These are a little daintier. There we go. You know, a lot of times when you do something like this, where it's a, you know, an odd shape, different from everything else, that's the one that stands out at the end, and you're like, oh boy, I want to do a whole series of those. This is not too bad, not too hard to move these. I say that now before I carry it to the kiln. We'll see what happens then. All right, that I'm gonna readjust at the kiln. All right, we've got two more to fit. And then we have a, a stray handy hanger without a, without a match. So, what do we do? Well, let me move this one over here. It looks like this kiln shelf is going to be just the right size. Well, I know it's going to be on mine. Oh, no, it fell in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you might want to cut and come back in a few minutes, but I'm going to go dig okay. that baby out of there. So, I was assembling over here, and one fell into the trash can, and I can't find it. So, I had one of the medium size that didn't have a partner, didn't have a pair. So I'm going to put a medium and a small one together and that of course sort of solves the problem because I can't find that little thing, that dark little piece of wire in this can. So, note to self, don't work over the trash can. I left my kiln shelf slightly off the table here so it'd be easier to pick up but then when I put that little wire there it went bloop, right into the garbage. So um, let that be a little lesson for you is, you know, uh, if you're gonna do that, maybe you have the garbage can like that, so if it drops, it lands on the floor and you can find it. So, all right, so here's the moment we've been waiting for. Let's see if we can get this in the kiln without everything going haywire. All right. A lift, there we go, we're getting it. We're gonna try and keep it nice and level. So far, so good. Have you seen how beautiful these are? Wow. Okay. All right, we're in there. And now just for my own sake, I like to rotate it so it's they're square. Wow, not bad at all. Okay, I'm gonna take a pencil because it's the little tool I happen to have very handy. And I'm gonna just go around and double check that they're straight, that they're under, they're you know sandwiched between glass. 
Um, okay, so tweezers yeah. are the tool of choice right now for this. That one's a little off. They're not lined up quite right, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to see what that looks like. This one, oh gosh, that one's not even inside. Let's see, we got to take this off. Oh boy. Let's hope we don't bump anything else. Put that there. That was the little guy that fell into the, it was his little partner that fell into the kiln. I mean, into the garbage can. Okay, well, let's go. All right, oh boy. This is why, oh my gosh. Like, I love the look of jewelry, but I don't know, this type of stuff, getting it all just right is a little bit complicated for me. I like bigger stuff, but I think I'm really gonna like this. So I'm, I'm visually make... looking at the shelf to make sure nothing's too close together. I'm looking to make sure nothing's falling off the edge of the shelf. So I'm content with that. Uh, if wires come close together, that's okay because they won't stick together. Right here, there's a little bit of wire sticking out. Let's see about fixing that. Okay, there we go. All right, and now I think we're ready to go ahead and close the kiln. Okay, so we've got the pieces loaded in the kiln successfully. That's a big plus. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fire this to a full fuse temperature. So right now my kiln says idle and 86 degrees. I already have it set for a full fuse program. So we're gonna hit the pro button, which means we're in the pro mode. Then it's going to tell me that it has its pro, program number one. It has segments three, which is what I'm at, what I would like. And then the first rate is 300 degrees to a temperature of 1300. It's going to hold there for 40 minutes. Then it's going to go 500 degrees to 1465. It's going to hold there for 10. Then it's going to go 500 degrees down to 960, going to hold there for 40, and then it's asking if I'm ready, which we are, we're going to hit the start button, and there we go, now we're firing. So, this is going to fire overnight, it only takes a couple hours to fire actually, and then, but then it takes several hours to cool because this kiln retains a lot of heat, it's got terrific fire brick, which keeps our, our little projects super comfy, warm and cozy in there so that they anneal and cool slowly so they're successful and durable projects. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what these look like. Nikki and I had a lot of fun in the studio today. She was filming, then we, she put the camera down a little bit so that we could uh, work together. And she saw me working, she's like, uh, yeah, that looks like fun, I'm gonna join right in. And she did a terrific job making some really cool pieces too. So that was fun. I'm definitely gonna be ordering more of those handy hangers because I can see myself making more of these. And I can see a variety of other opportunities for to use them, you know, other um, projects. So I would like to mention that I'm wearing one of my own artwear shirts. And if you'd like to have one of your own, you can order them on my website. I also have cool mugs. I have eco totes with cool sayings on them. And I'm getting ready to make some new shirt designs, new graphic designs for my artwear. And if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear it. You know what you have to say. You know, would you like to have, um, you know, Whatever you'd like to put on a shirt, let me know, and I'll consider making it one of my designs. It's another aspect of, you know, art, doing art and designing and, you know, wearing clothes that are comfy. And just the other day, I went to the farmer's market, and the woman said, oh, I love your shirt. I said, thank you. I made it. She's like, no way. I was like, yes way. I made it. And she's like, well, can you make shirts for me? I said, of course I can. So it's really fun to take your art outside of the studio. You know, I'm uh, very often I'm in my own little environment here, so it's fun when people, you know, see this and they realize, recognize that it's different, it's artistic, I'm expressing myself. So, if you have some ideas, share them with me, I'd love to hear them. So, thanks for joining me, I hope you had fun. Um, had a great time in the studio today. Please look at my website, follow my blog, follow my, um, you know, join my subscription, my membership videos, if you'd like to get more intense projects. And I look forward to sharing this video with you and making another um, part to this and show you what these look like later. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy fusing.